tarsal bones. They are seven tarsal bones which are arranged in proximal, middle and distal row. In the proximal row, we have two bones that is the talus and the calcaneum. In the middle, we have the navicular bone which is attached to three cuneiforms, medial, intermediate and lateral cuneiform. In the distal row, we have the cuboid bone. Let us discuss about the talus bone. Talus bone, it is the bone which is present in the proximal row of the foot. It connects the leg with the foot. It has following parts, the head, the constricted part, the neck and later behind will be the body. The head is rounded. It articulates in front with navicular bone. In the below part, it will be having a ligament that is called as talo navicular ligament, which is also called as spring ligament, which is going to support the joint between the talus and navicular bone. It is an example for ball and socket variety of synovial joint. The neck is a projected part from the body. It forms an angle that is between the head and the body that is almost 150 degrees in case of adults. 130 degrees to 140 degrees in case of children's. Inferior aspect of the neck has a groove. This groove is called as sulcus talli. This is going to articulate with the corresponding groove which is there on the upper aspect of the calcaneum that is called as sulcus calcani. When both articulate together, it is going to form a tunnel. This is a tunnel which is there between the two bone that is called as introsious tunnel which is called as sinus torsi. Inside this tunnel, we have a ligament that is the introsious talocalcaneal ligament. Body of the talus will be having a superior surface which articulates with ankle mortis which is formed by tibia and fibula. Tibia will articulate on the medial side which has a comma shaped articular facet. Fibula is going to articulate on the lateral side which has a triangular articular facet. To the inferior aspect, we have an articular facet which is articulating with the superior surface of the calcaneum to form the posterior talocalcaneal joint. The posterior surface of the body will have two tubercles, one on the medial side, one on the posterior side. In between this, we have a groove for tendon of flexor hallucis longus. This bone has no muscular attachments, all are ligamentous and it is going to articulate with four bones. In the upper part, it is articulating with tibia and fibula. This joint which is forming above the talus is called as supratalar joint. Below it is articulating with calcaneum. This is called as subtalar joint which is also called as posterior talocalcaneal joint. In front, it is articulating with navicular bone to form a pre-talar joint. Calcaneum, which is one of the largest tarsal bones, which is present below the talus, which is directed forwards and laterally. This bone has many surfaces. One of the surfaces is anterior surface. This anterior surface will articulate with cuboid bone to form calcaneo-cuboid joint which is an example for saddle variety of synovial joint. This joint is supported from inferior aspect by the tilt of the calcaneum, which is called as calcaneal angle. This joint, that is the calcaneocuboid joint, along with talocalcaneonavicular joint, is going to form the mid-tarsal joints. Posterior surface of calcaneum, it is divided into three parts, the upper part, the middle part and the lower part. Upper part is related to fibro fatty tissue. The middle part is related to the attachment of tendo achilles along with plantaris tendon. The lower part is related to fibro fatty tissue which is covered by skin, which helps for weight transmission from the bone to the ground. We have the plantar surface, which has three tubercles, an anterior tubercle and two posterior tubercle. Between these three tubercles, there is a rough area which gives rise to attachment of long plantar ligament. Anterior to the anterior tubercle, there is a rough area which gives rise to attachment of short plantar ligament. Dorsal surface of the calcaneum, 
it has three parts an anterior part a middle part and there is a posterior part anterior part is rough and it gives rise to attachment of a bifurcate ligament stem of inferior extensor retinaculum and also it gives rise to attachment of extensor digitorum brevis the middle part has articular facet which articulates with talus to form subtalar joint along with intraosseous ligament posterior part there is a rough area which is related to fibro fatty tissue which separates this bone from tendo achilles which is attached to the posterior surface of calcaneum medial surface of calcaneum it has a concavity and upper projection this projection is called as sustentaculum tali which has a superior surface which has a articular facet which articulates with the head of the talus it has a inferior surface which is grooved which is related to the tendon of flexor hallucis longus it has a medial surface which is attached to ligaments we have the deltoid ligament we have the spring ligament and also we have the slips of tibialis posterior medial talo calcaneal ligaments attached to the medial surface of sustentaculum tali lateral surface of calcaneum this lateral surface has two tubercles anterior tubercle and a posterior tubercle posterior tubercle gives rise to attachment of calcaneo fibular ligament the anterior tubercle above there is a groove for peroneus brevis below there is a groove for peroneus longus the anterior tubercle itself will give rise to peroneal retinaculum so this anterior tubercle is also called as peroneal trochlea